Hi there, Russ here. Hey, welcome back to the shop. Um, this is another legacy building video. And what we're gonna talk about today is an idea that I have about bringing together the INCRA fence system and my legacy uh, milling machine. And actually, I think it works out very well. I don't know if you're familiar with the INCRA system. There's a bunch of them out there. They've been around for 15, 20 years at least. And I bought their Ultra System um, table saw. Started off as a router, and then I converted it to use it on my table. So I had this uh, Ultra System for many, many years. A couple of years ago, I bought my Unisaw, and it had the Beesmeyer 52-inch uh, fence system. So I've been using that on all my table saws and that. But and so now this uh, Ultra System, Ultra 24, is what it is. So it's a 24-inch. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's been sitting in the corner collecting dust now for a couple of years, and I couldn't figure out what I want to do with it. So finally, it dawned on me. Actually, I think it might work pretty well with, in conjunction with the router. And now that I've got it set up, I have decided that I actually like this a lot. Let me show you how I mounted it. Then we'll go over why I mounted it, and then we'll go over what potentially you can do with it in the future, so you can get some ideas of what I'm doing here. To begin with. This is the Ultra System. It's one of the earliest versions of the Anchor System that fit on the table saw. And this is just the basic unit. It has the carriage here that is stationary. It has the locking mechanism on it and the key for looking at the scale so you, so you know where your increments are. And also your templates. They all go into the rail system. So you have this rail, the rail that slides along the carriage. And when you get it where you want it, you lock it down. And that's the way the system works. And the third piece on this one is the fence itself. This is the old uh, fence for the router. And it has its own ruler up here on this part of it that you can slide back and forth. So you can set that one also. So... You get four scales on the rail here and one scale here for the y-axis. So what I did was I mounted the carriage onto a plate that sets on the top rails. Just like the carriage of the router sets on the top rails, so does this now. And this is mounted on that. I got a board underneath here so that when I'm ready to set this square to the x-axis, I can hold the machine and pull it to me. And that board is top contacting, and I can snug this down and tighten the other side down. And I know I am now parallel to my x-axis as this moves. It stays parallel. So quick and easy, I can lock this machine down and have it ready to go. So how do we hook it to the carriage where the router is? That's the other half. So to hook that up... What I did was, I had these blocks, stop blocks, and I actually have had these for years and years and years. Um, this one is down here on the corner, and this slides along the rail wherever I want it, and I can lock it down, and it's a stop block from my carriage in that direction to limit the travel. And I keep them on the corners uh, when they're not in use. And so, when I put the Inqua system on here, I took the two at this end and I put a notch in it. So now I can put it facing up into this T-track instead. And the notch is facing up. I got one on each side of my carriage. Then I can bring my I can bring my whole system up to that. I have here a couple of bolts. There's a T-track on the front here, a small one of this fence that holds the uh, number 10 bolts. So I have some super long ones with a wing nut that goes into that T-track. And what I do is I pull the fence up and I lift it up and I drop this into that slot on both of them. Then, then 
Now, then I can take and just tighten down the wing nut and pull it up against the head of the wing nut here. And that pulls it together on both sides so that it flushes that fence to the carriage. And now it's exactly, my fence on this is now exactly 90 degrees to my x-axis. This is parallel to my y-axis now. So now the machine is attached to my carriage return. Now I want to lock it down and, and establish zero on my x-axis. Very quick and easy. This only took a minute to set this up and attach it. Now I can take this and I set this. I set my piece that I'm milling in here and I decide where zero is. Where's my starting point? And let's say it's right here. So I set this where the bit is pretty close to where I want to call zero. Then I can take this loose and now from zero I know I'm going to do my milling going that way on my x-axis but I could go this way just as easily depending on which way I'm going as to where I set this plate. If I want to go this way, then I want some room here for this to slide through the rail. If I wanted to go that way, then I would bring this up to it and lock it down so that the travel would allow me to go that way with it. So let's bring this back here, somewhere where we think it's going to be, pull it to us, then square it up, and then tighten down the two T-nuts. And now, my system is locked in place. I'm still unlocked here so that my carriage return moves freely in the rail, and the rails moves through the carriage freely. And now I can set this where I want it to be zero. I set and slide the anchor ruler over to my key to zero. And now when I lock down here, I know that I'm exactly where I want to be to start with each time. So as I change out my piece, I can bring it back to zero to start at the same place each time. And then I can take, loosen it up, move it this way, the increment I want to move it, lock it down, do my milling here, and move myself down. So I can take advantage of the accurate to the 32nd of an inch accuracy with my anchor system right on my carriage return. As far as the y-axis, I drill a hole in my stand here, and I put a dowel in here with a nail on the end and sharpened it to a point, and I set that in here so that the pointer sets over this ruler. Now, I set my y-axis where I think zero is going to be, and once I've established that, I can take this ruler and set it to zero on the pointer. And now, I have a zero out on my x-axis, zeroed out on my y-axis. I'm ready to take my pieces and put them in and out and mill up things. And I don't have to set up all the time to do it. So I now have advantage of using it. I can either use it, lock it, or I can use it and travel and watch my movement to move a certain distance if that's what I want to do. So doing dados, mortise, mortises, tenons, finger joints, doesn't matter. Plus, theoretically, I'm also starting to figure out that some of these templates I can use so I can do like double-double. I can do double finger joints if you know what those are. I can do that using the Incred um, templates and do that kind of finger joint on here also. So I actually can do even more simply by having this machine, uh, the, this fence system, hooked up to my router. So now you know how it works and why it works. Um, and actually, it's very handy. When I don't need it, I can just in a couple of minutes take it loose and then move it off to the side out of the way. So I just loosen up the, the two bolts there, the two key nuts here, and then I can lift it up and off. Put that out of the way. And now, I can slide this back here and lock it down so it's out of my way. Or I can slide it off the system completely just as quick and easy and set it off to the side somewhere if I need to use the whole rail system. And now it's out of my way when I don't need to use it with my uh, x-axis. 
<clears throat> the other thing I noticed that I thought about after I did this is now I have my anchor system set up here. Why can't I do uh, table, router table work? Just like I could when I used to have this attached to my router table, which is over by my fence system. So what if I take my router plate and mount one right here? Fasten it down so it stays and my router is in here. I have instantly made myself be able to use the anchor system on an overhead on a router table. So I can actually double this up as a router table if I want to too. And I don't actually need that router table anymore uh, once I set this up. So I'm probably going to set up a router here and not be able to take advantage of using this fence system on a router table too. So now I can actually use, still use this ink girl on my router table if I want to do some other type of joinery. So on my whole anchor will now be able to be able to use and all the attachments I have that I have for my routers work, I'll be able to do it again and use it here instead, even though I gave it up on my table system. So I'm actually excited being able to start using this again and utilizing the capabilities of the Inkra fence system. Uh, if you go out and do some research on look at some of the videos out there, what you can do with it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It is a great system to have, and I've now figured out how to incorporate it into my legacy machine and be able to use it in harmony with the legacy machine. So, um, pretty soon I'll do a video on the different Inkras and which one to use. But let me point out real quick that I use this ultra system here because that's what I had. I've had it for a long time and sat there collecting dust and I finally said, oh, I can use this and I put it back to use. But you can do the same setup with almost any incre incremental system if you wanted to, including the least expensive one. This is what they call their universal precision positioning jig. This was the original um, incre jig and it was designed to fasten to your router table to give you exact increments so that you can do finger joints and dovetails and different things using it. And it works real well. It works on the same 30 second incremental system that the system does. It doesn't have the sliding. It's a little bit more arcade to use, but it works. So you can actually use this in place of this machine if you wanted to use just this on your machine. Um, this has an eight inch capability. This has a 24, they also have a 16 inch one, and they have a 32, and any of them will work. The idea is it's just to set it up on a platform, and once you get it set up, any of them will do the same thing that this one's doing. They just would be a little more difficult, a little less difficult to do certain things, depending on which model you have. So, uh, and one more thing about this system. I bought that Universal there for $12 on eBay. I took my time. I searched for Inkra jigs for quite a while. Also, I've seen this, the different versions of the fence system out there that you can buy for sometimes down around 100 bucks even if you're patient and watch long enough. Um, and you can find something at a pretty good price. If you have the money and you just say, oh, I got to do that. I got to have that system. You don't have to go out and buy their $500 or $700 Inkra system. They have on their website, I went out there and at Woodpecker, woodpeck.com, that's where Woodpecker is, and they sell the Inkra products. They have under the router fence um, umbrella all the different router fence systems. They have the LS system, they have the uh, universal one, and that sort of thing. They have different ones, but they have one there that they call the ultra to ls conversion and that this is the ultra uh it's the original version the original generation and it has the you can spot it real quick because it has the thousands uh increment here right by the locking mechanism and it has a funky lockdown for that here when they went to the ls system they have a red knob near the fence here that you spin instead. So they've changed it and that's the difference between the two. You can spot the Ultra versus this one. You can use that LS can upgrade. All it comes with is the carriage, the rail system, and this 
chrome faceplate right here. It doesn't have a fence or anything, but you don't need the fence particularly. I used it because I had it. But you could just as easily, if you had this faceplate, you could just as easily put a piece of half inch plywood on here, put a metal strip on the top, and then put a, a ruler with magnets on it on there. You can slide it anywhere you want and do the same thing that this does here using that. So you can do the zeroing out your Y axis on your system just with a piece of plywood. So don't think you have to buy that. But if you really want to buy something brand new and do it and you have the money to spend, they had this in the 24 inch version for 270 bucks, I think, $260, something like that. And you can buy the 16 inch one for about $30 less. So if you want to go brand new, go big and bold, you can do that. And that's what I would buy to get you to this point. Um, <clears throat> the templates, you can buy that template kit for $40. So if you happen to get one that doesn't have the templates with it or something, you can do that. Or if the templates are fading, after a while these templates do tend to fade out and sooner or later you're going to probably buy templates. But it works. So you don't have to buy just anything. You can use any of the different versions. They have an Inkwit Pro out there, which is different than any of these. And I've only seen pictures of it. I've never seen one in person. But those usually go for a reasonable price, too. And it does the same thing. It works on the same 32nd of an inch incremental system. And that's the idea. So, And I think there was a couple of off-brands that also do that. And so it doesn't even have to be the Incra system. You can make any kind of fence system you want, but have a fence system on your router so that you can use it for a router table and to hook up to this, and it works real well. So put your thinking cap on, try thinking outside the box a little bit, and find something, if you're interested, to do what I did here to be able to take advantage of your system and actually have use it and have more functionality, capability from it, or make it easier to do the same things you can do from the factory, but you can do it much easier with the Anchor Fence system on there. So. Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. Um, we're going to do a segment soon about the Inkra itself, the product, and some of the things you can do with it. Because when I show you some of the other things I've done with this universal one, you're going to probably laugh. It's really, it's pretty cool, some of the stuff. So we'll get into that too. So if you like this video, please say so. If you have any comments or ideas, share them. I appreciate it. And... Please, if you liked it, say so. And that helps give me the encouragement to keep going. So, but more importantly, please, you come back again for the next one, okay? We'll see you again soon.